Hello students, this is Mr. Bob and in this video, I'm going to talk about propagating uncertainty. And so for this specific video, we're going to talk about um, how it applies in partially to investigation 1-1, specific heat capacity of liquid water, but these ideas apply to just about any sort of uncertainty situation, okay? So you can generalize this. So if you're doing this for investigation 1-1 in the HL physics class, what I recommend you do is make sure you pause this video and copy down your data set for the investigation, which is going to be different than the data set I have right there. And please note that not, not only are the values are going to be different, but also the uncertainty in the, in, in the measurements is going to be different. I purposely put different uncertainties in column two here than what you were given or what you used in your experiment. So you're going to need to figure that out before, to get the most out of this video, you're going to need to figure out that column before continuing on with this video. And just a reminder, uh, you're, if you're doing this in the year 2020, uh, the temperature probe you used is a Vernier GoTemp probe. So you can go online to the manufacturer and look for the uncertainty there. And the balance, the electronic balance you used had a precision of plus or minus 0.1 degrees, 0 0.1, excuse me, plus or minus 0 0.1 grams, because it's a mass we're talking about. Okay, so again, pause the video for a second if you need to, to write down this information for yours. Okay, so assuming we have this information, we're going to go on from here, and I want to figure out how to propagate uncertainty. And so a data table like this for this first lab of the year should appear in your lab report, obviously with your data. And let's just go through and recall how we're going to calculate these things. If you remember, fractional uncertainty is really just the raw uncertainty divided by the value. So in this case, it would be 0 0.2 divided by 5.0, which turns out to be 0 0.040. We do a similar sort of activity for the other ones. 0 0.2 divided by 10.0, that's 0 0.020 or 2.0%. Go on down the line. And I'll skip ahead here. You can you can actually pause the video if you need more time to do this for your own data. When I did these calculations, I got numbers that look something like this. 2.1%, 0 0.036, 3.6%. Okay, so with that in mind, the question is, how do we propagate uncertainty as necessary to figure out the uh, uncertainty in our value for the specific heat capacity of liquid water, letter C? Well, you have a complicated equation that you have used to derive C, and the question is, how do you get, how do you propagate the uncertainty? So what you have to do is you have to go step by step. And the first baby steps we have to take is, first of all, we have the mass of the uh, water and the cup together, and we have the mass of the empty water cup. So we just have to figure out what is the mass of the water. Okay, and the mass of the water is really gonna be the difference between 110 and 10, or 100.0 grams, if I keep the significant figures, which I should. Now, how do I figure out the uh, uncertainties related to that. Well, I have to look at what I did. In order to get the mass of the water, what did I do? I took two values and I subtracted them from each other. So let's go back up here to this little box because this box has two key ideas that we need to remember. Uh, and the one that applies here is when adding or subtracting values, you add the raw uncertainties. So since I subtracted these values, I have to take the raw uncertainty for the mass of the water in the cup, this one right here, and I have to add it to the raw uncertainty of the mass of the empty water cup here. So this is 0 0.2 plus 0 0.2 or 0 0.4 grams. And again, this is plus or minus. And then from there, I'm going to calculate the next one like I always do, 0.4 divided by 100.0, so that'd be 0 0.004. Multiply that by 100 and I get 0.4%. So 0.4% of the uncertainty in the mass of the water. Another thing I'm going to have to figure out the uncertainty for is the uncertainty in the change in temperature of the water, delta Tw. And I'm going to say that I want to figure out the absolute value because honestly, with uncertainty, we're always dealing with absolute values because the uncertainties always get um, 
uh, the propagation always causes, most almost always causes the uncertainty to get bigger and bigger. So in this case, this is 28 minus 48 absolute value, which is basically 20.0 degrees Celsius. Now, what did I do again? I subtracted two numbers. So I have to then again, um, add the raw uncertainty. So the raw uncertainty here is one degree and the raw uncertainty here is one degree. So that's 1.0 plus 1.0, which equals 2.0. So this would be plus or minus 2.0 degrees Celsius. 2.0 over 20. Give me a number here, 0, 0. Multiply by 100 to get that percent, uncertainty of 10.0%. Okay, so moving right along here, um, let me just explain this further, um, just so you get a sense for what's going on here. So um, I have an equation, right? And I'm, I'm just making this up, but let's say the equation that I have looks like this. I'm looking for the uncertainty in F. Okay, and my measurements were for A, B, C, D, and E. So I have raw uncertainties for A, B, C, D, and E, and I want to know the uncertainty in F. Well, notice what's going to happen here. Um, what I need to start doing to get the uncertainty in F is I need to figure out what's the uncertainty in the term A, B. Similarly, I need to figure out what's the uncertainty in the term C, D. And then when I add these two together, what's the uncertainty in the resultant term? So what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be moving along through the different uncertainties and propagating them, so to speak, as you continue along through the equation. So one of the things you're gonna to have to do for the equation that you have for the peak capacity is you're gonna figure out the uncertainty in the mass of the water times the change in temperature of the water. So how do I do that? Well, the mass of the water is 100 and the temp change in temperature of the water is 20. So this is going to be 100 times 20 is 20,000 grams times degrees Celsius, okay? Now, what did I do here? I multiplied, okay, so now I'm doing something different. Since I multiplied, I multiplied two numbers. What do I have to do? Look up here, I have to add the percent uncertainties. So I'm adding the percent uncertainty. So I'm gonna add, let me choose a different color just to kind of make it highlight. I'm gonna add the percent uncertainty in the mass of the water here and the percent uncertainty in the change in temperature of the water, these two numbers. So this is gonna be 10.0 plus 0.4, and I'm gonna get 10.4% here. I'm gonna work backwards from here. If I divide that by 100, that's 0.0104. And then 0 0.0104 times 20,000 is going to give me plus or minus 208. You notice how I'm now working my way backwards because it's the percent uncertainty I can get first. And from there, I work backwards for the fractional and the raw. So what I've tried to do here in this video is just show you the building blocks, so to speak, of what you need to do to be able to propagate the uncertainty from the raw data that was taken to the final result when you basically solve that equation for the specific heat capacity. So I'm gonna stop there and hopefully this gives you enough of an understanding of the process that you can then use, um, use it on your own with your own data working with your classmates, your group mates to successfully accomplish this. If you have any questions, you know how to reach me. Um, and again, a graph or a, this table, a table of some sort like this must appear in your report along with an explanation of how you propagated the uncertainty. Um,